Welcome to Deep Thought, creating a new culture. I want y'all to think about it. What, did I, what have I said? A shape of culture is powerful. And with that power comes responsibility. But what if someone decides to create a new culture or to put an idea out there? Now, I'm a writer. I definitely know how powerful a writer is. Like I had mentioned in the last podcast how you know, a scholar had actually referenced my um, novella, actually before, because I actually did the novella on uh, um, one of those Ing sites, uh, N-I, Ning sites. Remember they had that? That was very popular, and I wrote it there. It was like a serialized story, and he was following everyone, and he referenced it in his book. Um, If y'all want to know, because I know some people probably know which scholar, uh, hit me up privately. Hit me up in my contact information. And um, I can give you a link to the book. I ain't going to give it now because it's, let's just say the book is only appropriate for certain groups. And I'll leave it at that. But creating a new culture, hmm, that's a powerful thing. Because when people see what's happened out here in society, it's culture. All the negative stuff is culture. If you got some dysfunction on a job, it's culture. In a certain neighborhood, people behave a certain way. It's culture. But just like you have bad, you can have good. Who's to say you can't create a new one? Who's to say you can't create a culture where it could be on anything? You could create a subculture that's based on intellectualism. Where everybody, the big thing is being intellectual. You know, and mating with someone intellectual. And creating something that supports it. I mean, you can create a whole thing. This is an intellectual thing. Okay, say you want an intellectual culture. That means not just an educated culture, because education um, is usually just programming. It's indoctrination. But an intellectual thing where people are all thinking critically. Uh, A culture of critical thinkers. How would you create that? Well, say somebody had that idea. They could put it in a fiction book, or they could put it in a nonfiction book that's real popular. They could use the Ayn Rand example, right? So they do that, and they put in all the ideas of it. They could say in the book, they could say, hey, you know what? In this culture, a person's ability to read is very important to get information and to uh, even debate on a very intellectual level with references and everything in civil. Okay, that could be a big part of it. But then that's not just the that's just not the simple part of it. When you're trying to create a culture, because you know, you might say, well, we want to create like a whole group based on it. So you have some men and women come together and they mating that not so much because of the physicality still is important or, you know, superficial things, but, you know, how intellectual the person is. Are they intellectually compa- uh, compatible? Can they have a talk on something? Okay, fine. But then you have the children. That actually creates, the, that actually expands the culture because then you have to create a way of educating them and a culture, which culture is cultivated. How are you raising those children? What behaviors are you encouraging? Which ones are you discouraging? You know, you want to create intellectual children. So, you know, you might have you might have a system where you have a bunch of toys that stimulate their brain growth and toys and activities and stuff. You know, and then, you know, that actually a culture actually creates business. You know, a lot of people talking about the economy and everything, but honestly, the key to the economy is the culture. Because the culture says what people find viable and what they don't. You know, one of the reasons this culture is falling apart, well, the economy's falling apart, is that, you know, yeah, one part of it is, uh, of course, the uh, coronavirus. But a big thing is, you know, you've got the retail stores closed and the restaurants and bars closed. That means a lot. There's been some places that were... Um, 
you know, affluent areas and the most you find, you'll find nothing but bars and restaurants there. People partying more. I remember when I was out in San Diego, uh, my family out there, he was driving me around and he was showing me some of the rich places. All you saw were bars and people just relaxing and everything, right? But that was part of the culture. Well, if you have a more intellectual culture and instead of uh, bars, the big thing is... The big thing is like lectures <laughs> or debates and even the entertainment in that way, you know, well, if the entertainment needs to be like more uh, intellectual type of stuff, more high brow humor, you know, more thinking humor or, you know, maybe movies or something where the characters aren't just some dumb characters running around, but espousing intellectual ideals. Hmm. That's some powerful stuff, and that's just off of one thing. It could be off anything, because one of the things I've studied is subcultures. I study subcultures. Every time I come across them, I just pay attention to it. And it's so powerful, you know? It's so powerful. But one of the things that pushes those subcultures is the creative people. It might be the writer. It's, it might be the artist. And when I say artist, that could be, that could be a visual artist. That could be definitely a musical artist. Like someone could actually create something new just based off of creating the music and everything. It's a powerful thing. It's a, it's a powerful thing. You think about it. And that's the ultimate. And you know what? That brings everything around. Because that person who's creating it is actually shaping it. They're actually shaping something new. They're deciding because, okay, say, let's go back to the writing thing. You know, personally, I like writing because I'm a writer. I know how powerful a writer can be. As they say, the pen is mightier than the sword. Because, yes, the sword can kill. But someone with that pen, they, they can create a whole universe, whole ideas, and people follow it. You know? Even if they don't mean to. Let me use an example. Y'all know I go off on tangents on here. Look at Star Trek. I think there was a book I saw. There's a couple books I saw, and these weren't like the usual entertainment thing, talking about episodes. These were talking about philosophies and Star Trek and also technology. You know? Remember these flip up phones? Where did we first see these flip up phones? These flip ups, Star Trek. <laughs> Star Trek. A lot of stuff there is stuff that, you know, all based off the idea of one man. He actually created something. You know, and there's a, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of, because in this world, we got thousands of cultures. And I don't mean just like the national uh, cultures of a particular nation, like thousands, maybe even tens of thousands, you know, subcultures, everything, you know, different activities and everything. But yeah, a writer could create it. A musician could create it. You know, a poet could create it. You know, it's just an idea that other people adopt, you know, and it's powerful. And, you know, I would say, I'm saying that to say, you know, people have a choice. You can create, you might be the person, somebody listening to this might have some ideas for something. Write it down. Do a video on it. You can shoot with social media and now all you need is a good viral post and you can create something. Just be able to follow along with it. Start, start adhering to it, you know, positivity. Because ultimately, we all have a choice on how we want to behave. We all have a choice on how we want to behave, what we want to do and stuff. And you have some people with some great ideas that other people can adopt, positive ideas. And it needs to be done because unfortunately, there are people who adopt negative ideas. They adopt negative ideas and it leads them along. It can cause destruction, right? It can cause destruction. There's one in particular I'm thinking about, but I don't even want to say the name. I don't. I don't even. I don't even want to say the name of it. Let's just say it's a, a particularly racist subculture. I ain't gonna say what kind of what sprung from uh, a book that was in that subculture, right? That's how serious I am. I don't even want to put the name out because I don't even. I don't even want anything about those videos in the uh, column or something, you know. So anyway, though, creating a new culture. Something to really think about. 
So anyway, that's all I have from now. Peace and blessings, everyone.